Welcome, learners, to today's chemistry lesson. Your teacher is Martin Bunguswa, and the lesson comes to you from the UPA Command Center, where chemistry is the paragon of originality. We move on and discuss what you call applied chemistry. And under applied chemistry, there are two concepts that are taught. The first one is about detergents, and the other one is about polymers. Welcome. We shall start with detergents. A detergent is a chemical substance that is used to improve the cleansing property of water. We all know that water cannot on its own clean, remove grease from substances because it has what you call surface tension. Surface tension is a tangential force that acts on the surface of a liquid that makes it behave as if it were made up of an elastic skin that is not very easy to penetrate through. And the role of soap is to lower the surface tension. So there are two factors that affect surface tension. One is impurity and another one is temperature. And in this case, an impurity is soap. And you also find that washing clothes using warm water and a detergent makes them look much better than if you use cold water. There are two types of detergents. One is called soapy and the other one is called soapless detergent. The difference is the composition of that particular substance. In our discussion, we shall start with what you call the soapy detergents. I'll use the common examples of what you normally use at home. <coughs> the soaps, which are called the toilet soaps, the ones that we use for bathing are the ones that are known as soapy detergents. Example, we have Rexona, we have um, Geisha, we have uh, Sunlight. Those ones that we use for bathing are the ones that fall under the category of soapy detergents. So that as we discuss how they are being prepared, you know exactly what we are referring to. How are these detergents prepared in the laboratory? I first of all want to take you back to what we had discussed under the carboxylic acids. We said that carboxylic acids can react with alkalis, can react with alkalis or metals like sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Carboxylic acids can react with metals like sodium or magnesium to form substances which are called salts. And these salts that are formed have varying length. A salt is any, a soap is any salt of a carboxylic acid that has more than 15 carbon atoms. The most common one is sodium stearate. So that therefore means that if I take a carboxylic acid with more than 15 carbon atoms, I react with an alkali, I'm likely to get what is called a soap. But ordinarily, we do not react carboxylic acids with alkalis to give us soaps. Instead, on large scale, we get soaps by reacting vegetable oil with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and we boil them. These oils are found in fats, like animal fats. We can have whales. We can have the, the fat from sheep. We can have fat from fish. We can have fat from even a cow. But we need a something that has a large reserve of the fat, like, for example, the whales. These compounds contain what you call the fat acids that are commonly found in esters. And in these 
oils that we are talking about, they exist as what we call triester. They are called the fatty acids. A typical example of the formula of the triester that is found in those fats is as shown on the diagram. It is C17H35COOCH2, C17H35COOCH, C17H35COOCH2. So what happens, we take now this fat and mix it with the sodium hydroxide. Remember, because it's a fatty acid and it's reacting with sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali, we can also refer to this process as neutralization because the base is neutralizing the acids in that particular ester. Now, during the neutralization process, I want you to see exactly what happens. The fat acid, which is the triester, splits at the point where we have put the dotted lines, that dotted uh, rectangle. Then the sodium hydroxide divides itself into two, into the sodium and the OH. Then the OH group moves up to here, where it now becomes C17, H35, COO, OH. And then it applies three times because of the three uh, particles, the, the three esters that are found there. And the salt that we form is C17H35COONA. We put an NA, and then what comes out, therefore, would be CH2 with an OH, CH with an OH, CH2 and an OH. And that substance that is formed is called glycerol. So glycerol is an example of a trial because it has three OH groups. In fact, it's called a propan one, two, three, triol. Now, if you remember the way we named the carbon atoms, if the carbon atoms are a 10, it's called decan. When we add 8, it becomes octadecan. So you can be able to give the UPAC name of this particular compound with 17 carbon atoms. So if 10 is decan, now these are 18, then you add 8, it's called octan, so you can refer to it as um, octadecan. So that compound is what forms the soap. Now, when we add sodium hydroxide to the, to the alkali, to the ester or the oil, we must heat until it boils. And then as it continues to boil, we must add sodium chloride. The reason why we add sodium chloride is in order to reduce the solubility of soap in the aqueous mixture. And that process is called salting out. Therefore, soap floats, glycerol remains at the bottom. And it can be filtered off. And when we filter off, we get our soap. And if you look at the way we have written the equation, we have put the positive on the sodium and the negative on the other side for the reasons that we are going to explain slightly later on. Now, we have fats and oils. These fats and oils are actually esters. Fats occurs in animals, but oils occurs in plants. Like plants that have oils, most of them are called nuts. Example, we have cashew nut, coconut, Peanut. P means very small. So we go for the one that can give us a large supply of it. Now, in Form 1, you remember we taught you about uses of hydrogen. That one of the uses of hydrogen is to convert oils to fats. That process is called hardening. Fats are saturated because they don't contain those bonds. But oils usually are unsaturated. We can therefore use acidified permanganate 7 to distinguish between oils and fats. 
So for our purpose of making soaps, we can use oil, we can use the fat. There is no problem, but we shall still get the same substance. And the process by which soap is formed is called saponification. <coughs> it can also be referred to as extra hydrolysis. And so students, I want you to note how the soap is formed from that equation. At first glance, the, the ester may appear to be a very complicated formula. It is simply because of the C17 H35. But with experience, you will come to learn that the formula is not very difficult to write. And therefore, this is a simple flowchart that summarizes the process of soap formation. You take the sodium hydroxide, we mix with a fat, then, or an oil, then we heat. Then as we are heating, we are adding sodium chloride to it. Then after adding sodium chloride, we do the filtration. The soap is at the top, the glycerol is at the bottom. And then, so we get soap as the residue and glycerol as the filtrate. And once we have gotten the soap, we can pack it into different shapes in order to be sold. And before we do that, we are supposed to improve its quality. And the quality of soap is improved by either adding perfumes. And these perfumes are actually the esters. We can add substances called builders. Builders, example, are tetraoxophosphates and also dyes. The reason why we add builders is in order to ensure that the soap is not too polar or the soap is not too nonpolar. We also add substances which are called dyes to give color to the soap. We also add antiseptics. We can add many other subs. We can also add sodium carbonate. All these substances are meant to improve the quality of the soap and from there the soap gets to the market ready for sale that is students is how we make the soap but uh, i want to add you something here that we can use sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to hydrolyze the fatty acids what therefore is the difference between a soap formed from sodium hydroxide and one formed from potassium hydroxide Soaps made from sodium hydroxide are hard. While salts, soaps formed from potassium hydroxide are soft. Soaps made from sodium hydroxide are solids. But soaps made from potassium hydroxide are liquids. Salts made from potassium, sodium hydroxide are more soluble. But salts made from potassium hydroxide are less soluble. Like most of the liquid soap that we use at home as detergents are actually made from potassium hydroxide. So at that point, students, you need now to know all the processes involved in soap formation, actually the general formula of the soap and the other one, which is called glycerol. And glycerol is normally sold in form of glycerin. CH2 OH, CHOH, CH2OH. And glycerin can be used as, um, it's normally used by people, they apply on their face or on their skin to make it soft. So that is all that I'll teach you today about soaps and detergents. And remember to prescribe to our channel Top Notch TV to watch more of the same uh, the same stuff coming to you from our TV station Top Notch at the Center of Excellence, which is called the the, the, the headquarter of Top Notch. Thank you, and let's see you next time.